Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be talking about test lamps. We're going to go through exactly how to use it, when you should use it, and how to up your electronics and diagnosing game with it. So this here is a circuit tester. We're going to walk through exactly how to use it on a car and how to do some diagnosing and troubleshooting with it. First, we're going to talk about how this works and we're going to go through the standard operation of it. Then we're going to talk about how to use it in different scenarios. We're going to show how to use it to check grounds. We're going to show how to use it to check fuses. And then we're going to show how to use it to check injectors on an LS1. So let's go ahead and start talking through what this is, how it works, and why and what scenarios you'd rather use this rather than a voltmeter. Here's your standard test light. They're unbelievably simple. You can actually buy ones now that do have a voltage indicator on them, but this one does not. So I'll leave a link in the description of kind of a setup like this that you can pick up if you want. But essentially all you have is one circuit. So everything in here is in series from here to here. And then there's a bulb on the inside. The bulb is a six to 12 volt bulb. So this one can actually do six volt systems. It can do 12 volt systems. Now the way that this works is with the bulb on the inside, you know, the bulb can work whether there's positive on this side and negative on this side and it just flows through and makes a complete circuit. So with a, if we put the ground here, so I have a 12 volt connected to it, and then I put this here, it's checking and it's letting you know that there is power. Now, if I go the other way, then do 12 volt here and ground here, it also shows there's power. So the way that it works is there is, it's one simple circuit, doesn't matter which way power is going through it. So now that I have this on, I'm gonna drop it down to six volts and you can see as you go down to six volts, you still can see the power. So it is still indicating that there is power here. It's just lower because your voltage of your circuit is less. So we're gonna go down and see how low we can get. So that's three volts, you can barely see it. One volt, you can't see it. So you can, Use four zero to 12 volts or three to 12 volts. Now let's go ahead and see if we can use this to check to see if something's grounded or not. Okay, so now, to, now we wanna check to see if this chassis is grounded. So the way that this car is set up is essentially the chassis is one giant ground. Now, if you remember when we originally tested this, this works in both directions. So in order to test to see if the ground is good, we're actually gonna take this black clip. This is connected to the battery. So there, and then with that connected to the battery, we should be able to just touch this light to anywhere that is grounded, and it should let us know that the chassis is grounded. So if I touch it here, you can see positive 12 coming to ground, completes the circuit, so the chassis is completely grounded. So you can use it on different parts of the car and you can see what is grounded and what is not. And it's a great way to check what if there's a full circuit. Now, for some reason, if there are two separate grounded circuits and the circuits aren't connected together, maybe the ground doesn't have a ground strap, you could be able to see that with this because you won't get any energy through the light. So that's as simple as it is to check a ground with this. And you can also see essentially anywhere on the metal on this vehicle is completely grounded. Now to check a fuse, we're doing the same thing except to check a fuse, we're checking for 12 volts to see if there's 12 volts on either side. So this can no longer be on 12 volts. It needs to be connected to a ground. So we checked this a second ago and we saw that this was actually grounded, this panel back here. So I'm gonna connect this to this panel. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check the fuse. So quick check, do we have 12 volts here? Yes. So now we know that we can use this to see if we check both sides, and we can see that there is 12 volts on both sides. That essentially means that circuit is complete on the fuse and everything is okay and that fuse is still good. Now, if you t checked one side and there's light and the other side and there is no light, that means the fuse is dead. Now, to check the injectors on the car, you need to know how the injector system works. On some cars, you know, you could have a positive switched injector. Some car, you could have a negative switched injector. So it all depends on how it's working. Now the way that the car behind me, so the LS1 is set up, is there's always gonna be 12 volts at the injector on the plug. When it is functioning and working, the computer is actually taking the switch and it's shutting it, so it's bringing it to ground. 
So it's not turning 12 volts on and off, it's actually switching the ground. So it's a ground switching circuit. Now, understanding how the test lamp works, since we're checking for a ground and a ground switching on and off, that means the other side of the test lamp has to be connected to a positive 12 volts. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna connect the test lamp to the positive 12 volts on the fuse box. We're gonna turn over the engine and then we're gonna watch to see if the injector is firing. Now, one of the main reasons why I like using a test lamp on injectors rather than a voltmeter is you can actually see kind of as it's pulsing, kind of the light pulsing on and off. When you look at it with a multimeter, you're seeing an average of the waveform. So you, it's not really clear what's happening, but when you see the pulsing on and off of the light, that's much more clear. That lets you know the injectors are actually firing. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at the injectors on this car. So this side I do have grounded off out here. We'll check one side to see if there's 12 volts on it. That's 12 volts as there should be. On this side, there's nothing because it's connected to ground. So to check that, we're gonna have to see, is it switching? So 12 volts, that will not change when the car is turning over. So let's go ahead and check out this side. Now to check out this side, the first thing I need to do is, as we're talking about, this needs to go to the positive side over there. So I'm gonna connect that to the battery. With that connected to the battery, this light should be detecting if there's grounds or not. So anywhere I touch it that there is a ground, there should be power. Okay, so it's detecting grounds. So we checked one side that had 12 volts, nothing. The other side, you can still see nothing's happening because the injector isn't firing. So as I turn the engine over with the ignition on, if the injector is firing, this should light up. So I should be able to just take this pin here, put it on this side, and then it should flash every time this injector fires because it's checking when that switch goes to ground. All right, so I wanna walk through the injector wiring circuit because I think this is the easiest way to see and explain how I'm probing it and what's actually happening. So if I look at the injector wiring, the, the harness wiring here is in black. So you have the positive 12 volts coming down into the injector side. There's a fuse on the side. And then on the injector plug, on the other side, there is a computer controlled ground circuit. So you can see the switch here that's open now because the computer isn't saying ground and it's not calling for that injector to be fired. So the first thing we did is we checked the positive 12 volt side, we connected the alligator clips to ground, and then moved this test lamp to this side, and this went 12 volts to ground. Now that we're checking the computer controlled side, when we did that, we have to connect the 12 volts to a positive source. So on ours, we connected it to the fuse block where there's a positive 12 volts from the battery, and then we touch the probe to the negative side or the other side, not really the negative side, but I guess, I guess it could be considered that, but to the other side of the injector plug, which is the computer controlled ground. So when we do that, when the computer says open, this light is off, when this switch that is right here closes, then that light goes on. That's how the injector fires. And that's how we're checking this to make sure that this works. Uh, I thought this was important just to look at the circuit itself kind of separately because it, it helps clarify exactly where I'm plugging the probe in to see if it's working or not. Now, one of the things that you might need to do is you need to understand how the injector on your car is firing. That's the LS1 setup here. That's specifically how it's working with the stock computer. If you're running something else, it could be running differently. So make sure you double check on that. Well, it's that simple to use a test light to check out the different electronic circuits on the car to make sure everything is working correctly. Thanks for tuning in this week on Smacky's Garage. I'll see you next week.